What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from Brujo's Brewing, and they're out of Portland, Oregon, and this is their Mulsimer. So they're calling this one an Imperial Hazy IPA that is double dry hopped with Mosaic Citra and Mosaic Lupo Max. Comes in at 8.2% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This can is just under one month old. I want to give a huge thanks. Shout out once again to a very good friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Sierra Hotel, for this beer. So big thanks to him in the description box. I'll post a link to the beer mail unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies he hooked me up with. And this time around, he hooked me up with 10 different crazy beers, two of which were from Brew Host, and this is the second and final of the two that I am reviewing. And in total, this is the third beer I am reviewing from Brew Host, all courtesy of Sierra Hotel. The first one was their Majester Ignis. It was another Imperial Hazy IPA. It's quite delicious, but what really blew me away is the other beer he sent in this box, which was their Secular, and it was absolutely succulent. Um, it was uh, just phenomenal and the body might have been the best body i've had as far as like a hazy beer goes period it was just out of this world so i'm hoping that this one is much more in line with that one uh rather than the majester ignis but both of them are delicious brujo is getting a bunch of hype and yeah this one pretty simplistic when it comes to the hop uh bill basically mosaic uh mosaic lupa max and citra mosaic and citra you know one that tandem that a lot of places have used for many many years so yeah i'm really looking forward to this one so we're gonna give it a crack here and hope that it doesn't spray everywhere all right so let's give it a pour here and see what we got going on so you know uh brujo is known uh you know for their hazy game um, this one not looking as much of like hop custard as the others. It's a little bit darker. We'll see if that actually comes off on camera. Now, the other one I just had, again, the aforementioned secular, that one was a little bit more of that hop custard, like that light kind of, um, you know, almost yellow kind of uh, hop look. This is this is a little bit darker. This this reminds me of like a lot of old school, like other half uh, hazies. This has that honey orange color, I like to call it. Might even look darker on camera, but it just has a really nice uh, honey orange color, very murky and turbid, can't see through it. Almost a two finger of a somewhat creamy and with a little bit of soap sudsy um, looking head. I would say that's more of like a very light ten, uh, tan, maybe even um, eggshell white, but definitely not bright white. Hold it up to the light, you can't see through it. Yeah, I mean, that's haze for days. Uh, it's a little bit darker than I anticipated based on the other two beers I had from them, but whatever, not a big deal. Let's get a nose. <laughs> Holy balls. This smells like freshly squeezed orange and tangerine uh, juice. And I say that occasionally when it comes to hazies, but not a ton. Like, I'm one of the few, I feel, beer tubers that I just don't really use the word juicy a lot with, with hazies. I just, I see it and I understand what people say, but for me, it's usually more candied and sweeter fruit. But when I say that this beer is juicy, I, I feel like someone who likes juicy, hazy IPAs, like you, this has to be like just blowing your mind. This is incredibly juicy in the nose like it it smells like freshly squeezed oj yeah like insane like holy shit then i'm getting underlying like a candied mixed berry almost into like a field berry and i've mentioned this before it's been probably a couple years but uh, i grew up uh going to uh, my grandma's camp in um northwest it's northwest pennsylvania uh, around smithport uh, pennsylvania and we used to, you know, as kids, just do whatever for the day. And a lot of times you'd be going through a field and you'd pick a berry, aka field berries. You didn't know what they were. You just saw, hey, this berry looks like it's ripened. Let's eat it, right? Probably dangerous, but um, that's what we did. That's kind of like the aroma is like kind of like a, a nondescript field berry where I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. It's a surprise. That's what it is. But it has a little bit of that like nondescript kind of berry note. It has a, a, a decent sweetness. I just, uh, a, a decent sweetness. I, what I'm... When I'm looking back at this review, when I'm editing it, I'm gonna probably be dying of laughter when I went, because I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. ASMR. But yeah, no, it has again a pretty big sweetness in the nose or a perceived sweetness because you can't smell sweetness, but it just smells like it's gonna be sweeter on the palate. Yeah, almost like probably coming from the yeast that has like this vanilla bubblegum cotton candy kind of sweetness, a candied sweetness. But I mean. This is not all that complex. It's basically freshly squeezed orange juice or tangerine juice, a little bit of that field berry and a sweetness. And um, it smells really good though. Like I love OJ, so hopefully it tastes like freshly squeezed OJ. Let's get into it. Cheers everybody. Thanks for to see your hotel. Yeah, this is to me the equivalent of an 8.2%, you know, Imperial hazy IPA that is mixed with like OJ. Like, 
It has such a pronounced citrus character that's leaning again to the orange side of things, tangerine side of things, that if you like citrus leaning imperial IPAs and hazies and you know, New England uh, doubles and whatnot, this is right in your wheelhouse. For me, I really do enjoy it. But it's very simplistic, if I'm being honest with you. It, it doesn't have the complexity that the last two from Brujos had, but that doesn't make it bad. I just, I always say, uh, you don't need a beer to be complex to be good. This is one of those beers, but it's missing a little bit something from those beers that makes me like kind of go nuts about this one. Body, not as good as the secular, but definitely still really good. This is like higher side of medium, lower side of full. Um, that's the one thing I can say about Brujos. The bodies are spectacular from the beers, that secular being you know one of the best I've ever had. This is definitely upper echelon. The mouthfeel, however, isn't like, you know, amazing. It's good. It has a softness to it. This is still mild to moderately carbonated, but it has a soft, smooth, almost creamy kind of sensation to it. So the mouthfeel is really nice. The body's excellent. We'll say excellent. Let's go uh, taste. So front to back, there is a ton of orange juice. It's like pulpy orange juice. It's sweeter orange juice, a little bit of tangerine mixed in, maybe even like a little bit of like a ruby red um, grapefruit juice. They're like all intertwining. So this is like very citrus heavy on the fruit juice, leaning again more towards towards the orange tangerine side of things. Um, halfway through the palate, that field berry, it's like a sweeter, it's almost like if I ripped one of those berries off of the vine and then just um, sprinkled it with like crystallized sugar. That's kind of the, the, the feeling I'm getting on the palate. Um, it's maybe not as sweet as that would be, but... It's kind of in that realm. And then the finish, what I like about this one is everything I'm saying is screaming sweetness, right? Like OJ, sweet. Uh, a field berry with a little bit of crystallized sugar on it, sweet. The finish of this really does balance it out though. Um, the finish is, I'd say, it has a nice like herbaceousness. There's a nice dankness, a little bit of even like a, a grassy kind of feel. This is more like a, a, a dank herbaceousness or herbaceous dankness. It, it's more herbaceous than dank to me though. Um, it finishes semi to full on dry with a mild to moderate bitterness. The bitterness isn't as big as the dryness, but it balances everything out quite a bit. Like it's pretty drinkable for 8.2%. 8.2%, I will say, I'm getting a bit of warming in the chest. Nothing on the palate, no astringency. Just under a month old, absolutely zero hot burn on the palate. Just another really well done Imperial Hazy IPA from Brujos. Nothing more, nothing less. They are three for three with their beers. That said, this is probably my least favorite of the three that Sierra Hotel has sent my way. Is it good? You bet your bottom dollar that it's good. Is it amazing? It's not amazing for what I personally look out of the, or, or for the style. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that would grab this one and just be like, yeah, this is me all day. And I could totally get how someone would drink this one and think it's like their favorite beer from Brewhouse or maybe even their favorite Imperial slash double uh, IPA. I could totally see that. For me, no. So I had to take one more sip just to kind of lock in a rating. So I'm going to still give this a nice score because it is a real, like, as far as like, if you just put this against the vast majority of Imperial Hazy IPAs out there, this is still you know, towards the top of the list. Like, there's a reason Brewhouse is getting hype. Yeah, Instagram plays a role. Uh, you know, demand plays a role. Just like most of the, you know, hyped hazy producers, they get hyped for a reason, right? Not only are they brewing a good beers within that style, the hazy style, whether it's a single, double, triple, whatever, but, you know, uh, the demand, obviously, uh, you know, the limits of the beer and how hard it is to get and everything. But they're three for three. Uh, they kind of remind me of when like Fiden started getting hype. And I tried four beers that were sent to me by a, another good friend of mine and fellow beer trooper Kyle over at No Hype Beer Reviews. And I was like, I get it. All the beers he sent me got yeah, between a 425 and I think it was like a 455 rating wise for me. And I was like, I get it. They just make consistently good, tasty, hazy beers. And that's what I'm that's the vibe I'm getting from Brujos. Damn tasty. If you're in the Pacific Northwest and you can get your hands on some, whether you trade or go to the brewery to when they do a release or whatever, do so. It's definitely worth it. But at the end of the day, it's probably not worth, at least for me personally, to uh, set, pay secondary prices. I have, you know, a great friend in Sierra Hotel that has sent me three of their beers, but I don't think I would seek them out being across the country uh, based on what you got to kind of pay to get their stuff, whether it's in trade or actually buy. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So Brew Host, their Mulciber. I have no issues giving this. We'll go a high 4.25 and go 4.3 out of 5. That's pretty much where this one lands. I think it's extremely well brewed. I think it's really nice. Um, simplistic, but very enjoyable. Uh, the body's fantastic. The mouth feels nice. 
it's just a really good Imperial Hazy IPA. Nothing more, nothing less. I love the you know artwork on these beers. I love the black can with the gold top and everything. It's just, you know, they know what they're doing. And um, at the end of the day, I really do dig this one. So 4.3 out of 5. Price point availability, uh, I mentioned this in the last two, I have no idea. I would imagine four packs of this, probably in like the $22 to $24 range. Um, but if anybody out there gets their hands on brew hosts and you know what you pay for this one from the brewery, let me know. Same thing with availability. I think it's brewery only. And I think they're opening up their um, you know new brewery slash tap room, whatever this year. I don't know if they have yet. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in Portland, I'm sure you know of these. If you're watching this review you, and you're in Portland, you probably know of this brewery. Uh, or if you drink like Great Notion stuff, you probably know of this brewery. So um, yeah, but I don't know. I, I don't think they have a beer finder on their website because you find it at the brewery. But anyway, if you've had this one before, if you and I think this is the first time they released this one, could be wrong, but if you've had this one before, post in comment section. If you had anything else from Brewhost, what is something that maybe I should seek out down the line? Maybe I should do a trade or you know try to find it on secondary. I don't know. Um, there's just so many good breweries out there that I, I don't usually go that secondary uh, route pretty much anymore. So you know, I rely on uh, friends, but also like if I do beer mail uh, trades with, you know, other beer tubers and stuff, um, that's usually when I'm hip to another brewery. So uh, I appreciate everybody who has ever sent me anything, whether it's Sierra Hotel or anybody else. Uh, I've been able to try a lot of cool beers like you know, brew host um, because of it. And uh, it's not lost on me how awesome that is. So uh, once again, huge thanks to your hotel for the three brew host beers. It's been a fun little journey here, trying these out. My favorite without question, that secular fuck a top notch. One of the best hazies I've had in a while. Um, this really good, but just not to that level. So anyway, I appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the beer patrol. Thanks to Sierra hotel for this one until the next time. Cheers.